Welcome to Transparency with Zeb King. Today we have Eric Doherty with us. Welcome, to Eric, to the Thank show. Thank you, Zeb. Yeah, great. And uh, Eric, I know that, uh, well, we've met a few times yeah. uh, for coffee, et cetera, mm-hmm. and I know you're passionate about transit, public transit. Yeah, uh, all, all forms of transportation. All, all forms of transportation, even, yeah. okay. Um, so I'm hoping that we'll have an opportunity to, to discuss some of that uh, this evening. Uh, maybe uh, first we can get a little bit to know about you uh, and your uh, your background. In ter- is there a background in, in the transportation area? What brings you to that interest? Yeah, well, I, I actually started out because um, the provincial government wanted to put a uh, uh, expand a freeway uh, through my neighborhood in East Vancouver oh, when okay. I was living in East wow. Vancouver. And I got really interested in the... the um, transportation policy, got very mm-hmm. involved as an activist. And then later, um, I uh, went to planning school and got a, a degree and became a transportation planner. Um, but I, I guess the, but my real motivation for getting into transportation was the climate crisis. Um, transportation is one of the biggest sources of greenhouse gas pollution. And it's one of the ones that um, often doesn't uh, get dealt with effectively when there are governments are putting together their um, climate plans. So would it be correct that your your interest in transportation um, started uh, perhaps with that uh, concern about uh, climate change and then was also precipitated by this plan for a highway? Yeah, they, they yeah. came together. Oh, they came together. You know, together. because it was, it was uh, about that time is when I was becoming really aware of how big a crisis the climate um, situation was becoming. Right. And um, then there was this big project where the provincial government was spending a lot of money doing something that was guaranteed to increase climate pollution. So, and it was happening right in my neighborhood. And it was going to have an impact with uh, increased local pollution right on the local streets, uh, increased danger in the neighborhood. So it was global and very, very local. Well, here's a question that probably others would have. Do you own a car? Do you, do you, do you have a driver's license? Do you, do you own a car? Do you drive yeah. a car? Yeah, I, I, have a, um, I actually quite like driving if it's out in the country and mm-hmm. I'm not stuck in traffic. Uh, on the other hand, um, one of the most miserable things for me and a lot of people is uh, commuting in rush hour traffic every day in a in a car and being stuck in traffic. So you currently live in Vancouver? Is that still? Or no, 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 I've oh. just I've been in in Victoria for one year now. Okay. Um, and uh, this is my this is my new home again yeah, in the Victoria Greater Victoria region. I guess, yeah, I'm yeah. I'm, I'm going to be living right in Victoria. Oh yeah. Yeah. in the Oakland neighborhood. So you're not stuck in the traffic jam there, are you? No, I'm actually, I, ch- I chose that location partly because it's on one of the main bus routes between mm-hmm. downtown and uh, UVEC. Mm-hmm. Um, which and, answers one of the questions I, I had, which is, do you personally use the transit? Oh, yeah, I oh, do. do. I do quite a bit. Um, so you I, walk the, the talk, or you, you, you actually yeah. follow through with it, yeah. Yeah, I, I've used, I, I, I walk quite a bit. Yeah. I uh, ride a bicycle. I teach people to ride bicycles. Uh, I was going to say you walk the talk, traffic. but I guess in yeah. a sense you ride the talk. Yeah, know, well, it's uh, all of it. <laughs> yeah, all the above. And, and I also, um, uh, I look on, you know, Google Maps, and I check how, how long it's going to take me to get there on the bus. And, uh, for example, tonight I decided to drive because it was a lot quicker to get here on mm. driving than, than on transit. Yeah, we're, we're taping on uh, in the Mount Newton Valley area, which is, I don't know where the nearest transit stop would be out here. Not, not as convenient as, as some places. But. Uh, it's, it's not too bad, actually, for the, for the okay. walking distance. It's just mm. the, um, the buses aren't that frequent. Okay, right. So I would have got here uh, half an hour early. So, and you're part of an association, if I'm not correct, or mistaken, I mean, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Uh, and that's, uh, what is the name of the association? It's the, it's the Better Transit Alliance of Greater Victoria. Okay. It's a brand new uh, group that's just been formed a few months ago. Um, right. And the, the focus of the group is on um, getting better transit uh, into the region and uh, supporting the practical uh, projects that are, are being proposed in this region. 
Well, that's really good because I don't know of another association like that uh, that exists in the Victorian mm. area. Is there, uh, having come from Vancouver, are you familiar with something like that there? Or? Uh, actually, Vancouver doesn't have a... Really? Um, it's, it's actually uh, kind of sad uh, that uh, Vancouver doesn't really have a transit advocacy group that, mm. that has, that's out there advocating for, for public transit. It's... Um, it seems like it's Toronto and Victoria are the centers of the universe for um, mm. transit advocacy at the moment in Canada, perhaps. Well, that's interesting because then if uh, what I guess you mean by that is when funding is announced, a lot of it goes there to those centers of the universe. Well, uh, no, is it, that correct? It, it's also just that um, uh, where you've got the ad advocacy groups, it affects um, provincial and national policy. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the, um, in Toronto, there's the TTC Riders Union, and they're probably nationally the, the biggest group pushing for uh, better, um, or the biggest grassroots group that's pushing for uh, better, more, better transit, mm -hmm. more funding for transit. Um, mm -hmm. and, and so you mean it's just a matter of those places being organized, having the, I guess, arguably a lobby and politicians responding to that. Exactly. And that's, that's, uh, that's the, um, that's the goal of the, of the Better Transit Alliance is just very simply to put pressure on government, uh, to fund better transit, um, and, and actually to also provide the road space that, uh, transit needs because what do you mean that by that uh, well for example on Douglas Street um, there's uh, now approved 24 7 bus lanes are going in on on Douglas Street from uh, pretty much from downtown uh, Victoria um, all the way out to where it becomes a highway uh, at um, the uptown mall so that's road space that was previously uh, available for single occupancy vehicles mm -hmm. and now it's going to be for uh, dedicated to transit which is a much more effective use of the road space and what you mean is transit only transit only so uh, like what oh, okay okay uh. yeah so it's uh, th those those bus lanes will be uh, as far as I know and we're going to be pushing to keep it that way only for transit buses. When will that start? When will people start noticing that? I, I'm not sure oh. when they're going to finish the construction and, and get the 24-7 signs up. Oh. Uh, they've, um, there's two different projects going on in, in the city of Victoria. It's mm. the city of Victoria doing it. Okay. And in Saanich, it's the Ministry of Transportation and Infrastructure working on, mm. the, on the bus lanes. One is municipal, the other is provincial. Yes, yes, oh. because it's... It, it's a municipal road in Victoria oh, oh. and a provincial highway in Saanich. Oh, okay. And then the, the really crucial question is whether the, on the provincial highway going out to, um, to Colwood, whether the, the, shoulder, the highway shoulder bus lanes will actually get built in a reasonable amount of time. The, this is also, this is promised, is it? It's, it's well, it's... Um, it's vaguely promised. It's in the plans. In the transit plans, is it, or in the, uh, it, which plan it, would it be? In? It's in the yeah the regional transit plan. Okay. And um, in the regional transit plan, it's uh, there are bus lanes on um, the highway out to Colwood, Douglas Street, and the highway out to Colwood, but also out here onto the Saanich Peninsula, mm. all the way to the ferry. And mm. the intention is that those will be highway shoulder bus lanes, like you. You, you may have noticed them on um, Highway 99 uh, in Richmond, mm. heading out towards the, uh, the Massey Tunnel. And these are basically, they've converted uh, the, the shoulder, they use that for the bus lane, they widen it a bit and make it wide enough so a bus can drive down it safely. Mm. But then there's no shoulder. Right. So uh, those bus lanes don't meet the... Um, uh, they don't meet standards for for passenger cars. Um, mm -hmm. With the with professional bus drivers at a you know the high vantage point up on the up on the the bus, they can drive very safely on those lanes. If you pack them full of cars, it just it wouldn't be safe, and it also wouldn't work where the interchanges um, 
uh, where there's merging traffic. So, so, so this has been done before. It's been done over there in, in okay. Vancouver on the other side. And so, and it's just a matter of signage to keep uh, uh, passenger cars out of that? Yeah, lane. on the highway, um, it's very obvious. Yeah, it's just a matter of signage. Can you imagine it's kind of congested and people want to um, use those The interesting thing is, uh, is that there's, there doesn't seem to be much cheating at all no. in, in, in Vancouver, despite, you know, pe those being the Vancouver people. Um, uh, but in, in actually the trick is on Douglas Street in the urban areas, the lanes have to be very well marked. Um, and that's where there's more temptation to cheat. So mm -hmm. there may have to be some camera enforcement or something like that to keep those lanes clear of traffic. So what I hear you saying is that this isn't some dream that you have. It's already in place. It's just a matter of you'd like to see it followed through and you'd like to see it done soon. I'd like to see it done with, within 24 months, all the oh. way out to the six, to the six mile pub on uh, Douglas and highway. Um, How long has I, it been in the plans in the, in the works? Um, uh, what well, was promised soon by the BC Liberals in 2008. Wow. So, so they've uh, said, soon you're going to have bus lanes mm -hmm. back in 2008 and then just totally pushed the whole thing um, uh, to the side and spent the money on things like the um, McTavish interchange and uh, now the McKenzie interchange. All the money in this region that's, that was promised to go to these this network of bus lanes is going to freeway interchanges and other road expansion well, for private automobiles. Just to play devil's advocate, uh, does that not speak to um, where the population's at? Most people don't take buses. Most people drive vehicles, passenger vehicles. There are concerns that they have about whether it's congestion, et cetera, uh, safety issues uh, for their passenger cars, and they want action now. And so the pressure, the lobby, if you, if you will, gets put on government to build the overpass or expand the highway capacity mm -hmm. for, for passenger vehicles. Well, there's that, but there's, uh, there, there is a certain degree of, of desire for governments to do something. But people really do understand that you can't build your way out of congestion. They understand that if you uh, build an interchange, say at McKenzie, that it's going to move the traffic bottleneck down to the next intersection. Mm. Um, people have seen this yeah. in in uh, in all the cities of the of North America. Los Angeles is one of the classic ones where they've been trying to build their way out of congestion forever and have ended up with these massive freeways and people just end up spending more and more time and money stuck in traffic jams, mm -hmm. not going anywhere and being miserable. And even in places like Los Angeles, the, the people's consciousness has shifted that if you want to relieve congestion, you do it by providing transit that's not stuck in uh, traffic. That's bus lanes, uh, light rail, all these forms of transit that don't get stuck in traffic. And it gives people a choice. Even if they can maybe, own, some people can only use uh, transit three days a week. They may need their car for to run to a meeting uh, once or twice a week. But it's um, it gives them a choice. And they don't have to be stuck there in traffic when they don't want to be. Well, I know in, you, you said you are a transit user, and, and mm -hmm. so am I, uh, for disclosure. We're both uh, uh, travelers on transit. Um, a, a key question that I have for you is, what could a municipality do, say, for example, Central Saanich, I'm a municipal councillor mm -hmm. in Central Saanich, do to improve transit in our municipality? Well, um, there's some really uh, big picture things, and I think that's actually the, the most valuable way to, to look at it. Uh, one of the most um, important things for municipalities to do is speak out and say that transit is their priority. For example, you, you know, Central Saanich, um, speak out you know, as mayor and council um, vocally saying that what you want is these bus lanes on uh, the Pat Bay Highway through your, through your municipality. That's your priority. You don't want money wasted on more freeway interchanges. 
um, because that's what's on the table right now is to make this a freeway region. So uh, take it would... in the ugly direction that Los Angeles and Atlanta and other cities have gone on. I know Central Saanich for a long time, there's been an, a growing concern about the, uh, the, the safety problem of uh, Keating, uh, access to the Keating area from the highway. And there have been accidents and, and each one is so tragic. Uh, and it puts, yeah. raises that, uh, that, that call for a, a solution. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the solution that people have, have quickly gone to is an overpass. And that's built over many, many years. And previous mayors, previous councils have said, please, yeah. to the province. And we've been put on a, a, a wait list, essentially, of other municipalities asking for the same thing, another yeah. overpass. Yeah, well, where well, they but are. That means that what your municipality has been, you, you, your municipality has been going to the provincial government repeatedly and it's making these public statements that you want mm -hmm. a freeway style interchange mm -hmm. uh, and you've been completely silent as a municipality, as a collective, about the bus lanes in this region. So, yes, to that, the, uh, on the bus lanes, uh, which yeah. I think you're talking about the Pat Bay Highway, Yes, uh, which are a provincial highway, not municipal. But, uh, yeah. but yes, you're right, uh, the municipality, as far as I can recall, hasn't said much or anything about bus lanes. We have taken a position on improved transit. For example, we've been asking for improved transit into say out First Nation or better yeah. transit for Brentwood yeah. Bay, etc. I know the Tanner Ridge folks would like uh, some some transit, etc. But you, yeah, I hear your point on uh, yeah. the emphasis. Uh, we don't meet with the uh, Ministry of Transportation or others regarding uh, at the Union of BC Municipalities regarding transit. For example, we do meet. We schedule meetings regarding. Yeah in bigger highways and overpasses. Yeah, and it's and true. the the provincial um, and federal governments have just uh, just last year signed um, a climate accord and they've committed to shift money away from highway expansion to transit infrastructure. Well, that was a, the next question I had was to what degree What's this, the, the, the environment look like? I mean, I, I don't mean the environment, the natural environment. I mean the um, picture. What does the picture look like provincially and federally with regards to transit? You've said that they've, they've, they're shifting away from more... No, they, that they've signed an agreement to shift. They haven't implemented it. Mm -hmm. I think that it's up to... If, if municipalities are serious about uh, getting better transit, dealing with the climate crisis, reducing pollution... Um, and actually making their areas safer because transit is the, the um, improved transit is one of the best ways of make, reducing the um, uh, injury rate from crashes. Um, what you need to do is you need to go to the federal and provincial governments and tell them, in our region, we want you to implement your climate uh, accord. You've signed it. You said you're going to do this. Mm -hmm. Do it. Build the bus lanes. And then, you know, if there's a specific uh, place where there's, um, uh, where there's a, a safety hazard or if it's actually maybe just it's an access problem or traffic flow problem, um, take a look at what can be done. What's the lowest cost option um, so that we can, so that we'll have money left over to build the transit. You know, maybe at Keating, maybe that's a, an intersection with, a, with signal lights. I know uh, we've talked about a municipal level of government. We've talked about mm -hmm. provincial and federal levels. There, there's also a decision-making body that we haven't yet talked mm -hmm. about, and that's the Transit Commission. What is the Transit Commission, if you could explain for viewers? Yeah, the, the Transit Commission is, uh, the Victoria Transit Commission, is a group of um, local elected representatives, mayors, councillors, that are appointed by the provincial government. So they're elected and appointed. Well, they're they're the provincial government picks them from people who have been elected in the region, uh -huh. and so they're not a directly elected group representative of the region. They're they're hand picked. Um, Would and, you like to see that change? Well, I I don't know. I actually think that what um, what's happened in. Uh, uh, Metro Vancouver is an interesting lesson. They they don't have a um, TransLink is also the board is also handpicked uh, by the provincial government. Um, 
and there it's not even elected representatives. Most of the people on it are just sort of picked out of who knows where. Uh, in there, the regional district has taken the lead on transportation policy. Mm -hmm. There, the, um, the regional district has said uh, that they don't want the um, Massey Tunnel replaced with a 10-lane, $3.5 billion bridge. Uh, and what, they, what they've said is very clearly that they want that money. They think the priority should be transit. Transit infrastructure is where that money should go, not to this massive uh, freeway bridge. And um, interestingly, uh, when they, when, after they did that, and then they, they also made a motion asking the federal government to do an environmental assessment of the project, the federal government has refused to fund it. So there you have a regional district, just like our capital regional district. You don't need any new, mm -hmm. new mm -hmm. organizations. You just need to get your existing committee structure to decide that this is important and make the motion, send the letter, send out the media release, make the public statements, just saying what we want is we want what's in our transit plan. We want those bus lanes going out to Colwood. We want those bus lanes coming out here on the Sanus Peninsula. We don't want all this money spent on road expansion and um, freeway interchanges. Why bus lanes and not LRT if we're making a big ask? Um, partly because uh, we've already started on the bus lanes uh, and they can be done within two years. Uh, anything with light rail, you're looking at a decade away likely. Uh, you need to get federal funding, you need the business case, all these things. So why should people, you know, wait? It's not rapid. It's not rapid transit if you have to wait 10 years for it. Uh, people have waited long enough here. We can have the bus lanes done for very inexpensive, very reasonable price um, within 24 months out to, out to Colwood, um, to the Six Mile Pub area, which is where the highway ends. Mm -hmm. um, and then, then, if and when we finally get um, light rail in, those bus lanes will still be very valuable for emergency vehicles, ambulances, fire trucks, uh, and also the highway buses that will be going over the Malahat. And then, you know, I, I used to live in, in Vancouver, uh, every light um, rapid transit system breaks down once in a while, something happens. Hmm. Skytrain breaks down, light rail breaks down. When that happens, if you've got those bus lanes as on the highway, you can have an effective alternative. Uh, yeah, you can have an effective alternative way for people to get right. around that, so the system becomes more reliable. Those bus lanes are they can be a great asset, even once we've got light rail. Hmm. So for those people who are sitting at home or, or wherever they're watching, uh, what can they do? What, if they're in agreement with you or they would like to see improved transit, what should they do? I, I think that the first thing is we've got a provincial election coming up mm -hmm. and n none of the political parties have come out and saying we're going to get those bus lanes done in 24 months. Um, ask your candidates th that come to the door or, or phone them up, write a letter. Uh, find out what their their transit policies are, and um, on May 9th, vote for the, the the party and the candidate that is really serious about getting immediate and significant in improvements to transit done. And the bus lanes are one aspect of that. The other aspect is is getting the um, the operating funding. So that for, that's for a transit. good good answer if this airs before the election, but if this <laughs> airs after the election, what should the average person at home watching this do uh, if they want to see improved transit? Um, I think that one of the most important things is to talk to your, um, your mayor, mayor and um, councillors. Um, it's the municipal governments, the regional district that can put pressure on the provincial and federal governments as to where they put their money and whether transit gets properly funded or not. And so uh, your association, would that also be somewhere they could contact you? Do you have Absolute. a website? Yes, we do. Okay. Um, it's uh, bettertransityyj.com. Right. 
And uh, that's absolutely the, the Better Transit Alliance has a lot of information. Uh, it's also very helpful to, to follow us on social media. You can get to that directly from our website, mm -hmm. our, our Twitter and uh, Facebook accounts, to really spread the word that um, that there is a constituency for, for better transit in this region. And there's a constituency for climate action in this region. Well, as a transit user, but also uh, as someone who cares about the climate, I want to thank you very much for your work. And uh, so I say thank you also for coming on our show. Hi, Chikasiyan. Thank you very much, Deb. It's been great having being here.